I think some of the messages which have been in the media have been exaggerations. We won't reach a situation where antibiotics are no longer of any value at all. We won't reach a situation where routine surgery becomes particularly dangerous. I think where we could see a problem is, for example, um, very premature infants. They may have a lower chance of survival in 30 years than they do today. Or people who are involved in road traffic accidents who get admitted to critical care, their chances of survival may be worse in 30 years than they are now. If I develop cancer and I need treatment for that cancer, which suppresses my immune system, puts me at risk of infection, I may have a lower chance of surviving that in 30 years than I will today. What the World Health Organization has said is we can expect in 2050 that around 10 million people will die each year worldwide from antimicrobial resistance. And that is a lot, that's actually more than die from cancer today. Nobody ever deliberately prescribes an antibiotic which isn't needed. Doctors want to do good, not harm. But sometimes we are faced with patients who've become very ill very quickly, either in the emergency department or we see them um, on a hospital ward if they were admitted previously. And we often don't really know what's wrong with them. We have to make a decision very quickly and we do that on limited evidence. They may have an infection or there may be something else causing their deterioration, but we have to give an antibiotic in case it's an infection because if we don't, the patient is most likely to die. We've put efforts in the past into trying to reduce the number of prescriptions which have been initiated, but certainly in my own trust and in many other trusts, we've had very limited success with that. It is very difficult to reduce the number of antibiotics which get initiated, but where I think there is more potential is to increase the number of antibiotics which get stopped two to three days after they're started. There is a national initiative to make sure that all antibiotics which are commenced in hospital are reviewed two to three days later. And audits which we all perform indicate that we're very successful in that, in that we do review antibiotics more than 95% of the time. The problem though, is that most of those reviews do not actually result in the antibiotic being stopped. In my own trust, I would say fewer than 5% of antibiotics which get initiated are stopped at that two to three day review. The Centers for Disease Control in America, who are experts in this field, say that at least 30% of antibiotics could be stopped at that two to three day review. There are two reasons why that doesn't happen. The first is that traditionally doctors have tended to think, well, if I started an antibiotic and the patient's getting better, I should finish the course. And the second reason is that the person who starts the antibiotic and the person who reviews it are often not the same. So when somebody comes to review an antibiotic, they don't like to reverse the first person's decision because they don't know the evidence on which it's based. So one thing we're trying to do and many other groups is to get doctors to write in the notes when they prescribe an antibiotic to say whether they would be happy for that antibiotic to be stopped two to three days later. Because probably in about half the cases they would be able to do that and in hopefully 30% of cases overall they would be able to stop the antibiotic at the two to three day review. And overall, that would make a big difference to the amount or the volume of antibiotics which are being prescribed. <laughs>